Well, good morning, and uh, welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Uh, jo will be uh, preaching this morning. Don't panic that she's not here yet. She's up the road at the moment and will appear uh, in due time for the sermon. And if she doesn't, well, uh, Adrian is here and will... Uh... <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do that to him. I might, but I probably won't. Anyway, it's lovely to have Adrian with us as well this morning, and he'll be uh, leading our prayers for us a little later in the service. Well, why don't we uh, take a moment of quiet as we come to our worship together. We may have come from all sorts of, well, we have come from all sorts of different lives, I'm sure, different experiences of life in the last week or so. And just that remembering of wherever we've come from, whatever we've been doing, God has been with us, but sometimes it's, it's difficult to spot that until we come to that moment of silence where we remember. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship together. And we'll continue in our worship with our first hymn, My Jesus, My Saviour. My Savior. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort. Oh, <laughs> 
Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him as we confess our sins to Almighty God. We pause for a moment of quiet to bring to mind those things that we need to confess to him this morning. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now sit for our first reading. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1 beginning at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect 
when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God. We're now going to listen to Jesus' name above all names. Yes, Lord. Redeemer 
The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 14 to 29, the death of John the Baptist. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what would I, should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately, the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Oh God, in the words that I speak and what we hear, may you be speaking to us this morning. Lord, help us to lift our eyes to the spiritual blessings that are around us and there constantly. And may your spirit rest upon each one of us now as we listen. In Jesus' name, amen. So at first glance of our two readings for today, it would seem that they would go as well together, about as well together as chalk and cheese in a sandwich. Well, that is what I thought when I first read them. That passage from the letter to the Ephesians is one of those really feel-good readings and moments in the Bible. God's got a plan. God loves us and calls us to be a part of his plan. And ultimately, everything is going to be good. 
And then we have that story from Mark's Gospel. The strange and tragic death of Jesus' great proclaimer and cousin, John the Baptist. First arrested by King Herod for saying that he was wrong to take his brother's wife. Sounds a bit like the start of an episode of EastEnders, if you ask me. Then we go on, John the Baptist is beheaded because of a rash and impulsive promise made by King Herod and the vengefulness of Herodias. Surely this series of unfortunate and disturbing events can't be part of God's plan, that plan that was talked about in the letter to the Ephesians. Can it? It doesn't take much searching in the news headlines, maybe especially over the last year, to know that not everything always seems like it is going to plan, or certainly not God's plan. Ill health, wars, natural disasters, brutalities, death, it's all part of the daily reality of this world. And okay, maybe we're not literally losing our heads, but there's plenty that can make us feel like losing heart. So how do we reconcile this? How do we reconcile all this to God's plan and purpose that we heard about in the letter to the Ephesians? How can God be working everything in conformity with the purpose of his will? If so much of it looks like a mess at best. Just for a moment, let's go back and look again at that message to the Ephesians. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. These verses from Ephesians chapter 1 show us Paul counting what he calls the spiritual blessings, naming them one by one and blessing God for them. And Paul knew what he was talking about when it came to counting spiritual blessings over and above earthly ones. He was under house arrest at the time of writing this letter and had already experienced all kinds of afflictions and setbacks and would go on to face execution because of his faith. But Paul's prayer of praise in Ephesians doesn't focus on that. It recounts the story of what God has done in Jesus. The Father has blessed us in Christ. He chose us in Christ. Gave us our destiny in Christ. Lavished grace, free but priceless in Christ. Redeemed us through the blood of Christ. Revealed the mystery of his purposes in Christ and intends to sum up all things in Christ. Paul also counts the blessings of our inheritance in Christ, who is the fulfilment of human hope and the gift of the Holy Spirit, God's guarantee of the reality that is yet to come. Wow, what a list of blessings, eh? Not always the easiest to get our heads round as well. But the thing about these spiritual blessings is that they are there regardless of what is going on around us or within us in the world. They're there regardless of sickness or health wealth or poverty, beauty or brokenness of our environment. Spiritual blessings, unlike physical and material blessings, don't fade. They are new every morning, undying and everlasting. I wonder if anybody has ever seen... Um, some of those videos or maybe had the chance to see a live performance of a sand artist. Has anyone ever seen any of those where they have a kind of backlit um, almost table, 
yeah, you can see them. And they sprinkle sand all over it and start drawing in the sand. And before you know it, what just looked like, well, a mess really, um, starts to form a picture and an image. And then just as you realise what it is, they sweep it away and start again and draw something else. They're really, really good and worth looking up on YouTube if you haven't seen one already. There's plenty of them out there. I was watching um, one once and I saw one that was the story of the passion. So it started with Jesus on the cross. There was the, the beam of the cross and Jesus' head with the crown of thorns and the nails and his hair, all shaped and crafted from just grains of sand. But then, as I watched, suddenly those same grains of sand became a hillside, a sunrise, a stone rolled away from an empty tomb. And suddenly what was one thing actually became something very different. Life from death in sand. We don't know how John the Baptist was feeling in the time leading up to his death. But we do know that despite the bleak circumstances, he was still telling Herod and presumably all others around him about Jesus and all that God was doing. Perhaps John was choosing to see beyond the obvious difficulties of his situation and to focus on God's abundant spiritual blessings. Sitting in a prison, awaiting death, it can't always have been easy to see them. And often, and we will find this ourselves, it is much easier to focus on the negative things. The things that are wrong with the world, the church and the people around us much easier to find things to affirm and praise. But whether we notice them or not, God's spiritual blessings are there. God's plan and ultimate reality is being worked out, whether we're in a time when that's obvious or not. I don't know what you are facing this week. Maybe it's hard to see anything past an eight o'clock kickoff that's happening, I think I've heard, happening sometime this evening. (laughs) There is life beyond that, whatever happens. But whatever this week does hold for you, may I encourage you to do one thing, and it won't take that long. Some point this week, get your Bible or search engine however is your preference for looking up um, looking up the scriptures. And look up Ephesians chapter 1, 1 to 14. And just spend even five minutes just focusing on that list of spiritual blessings that Paul writes there. Maybe even just pick one word or a phrase that stands out to you. And give thanks to God as you do.
Let's stand and declare our faith together. <clears throat> Do you believe and trust in God the Father? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now sit for our prayers. Please join in with our prayers this morning by saying, hear our prayer when I say, in your mercy. Let us pray for the world and the global church. We give thanks for the wonder of God's creation. We give thanks for the beauty of forests, fields, oceans, and shorelines. We pray for all our fellow creatures, plants and animals, birds and fish, insects and worms, trees and flowers, and we sing praises to the great diversity of God's creation. We lament the things we are doing to harm the environment. We pray for everyone around the world suffering from coronavirus and everyone caring for them and caring about them. We pray for recovery and an end to the pandemic throughout the world. Looking at the injustices that have been revealed by the pandemic, we pray for a fairer and more equal world. In particular, we pray for a sharing of vaccines and medical expertise. We pray that the global church may respond wisely and prayerfully to the current situation we find ourselves in, nurturing believers to be agents of positive change in the world. In a world that needs it so much, we pray that amidst the suffering and injustices of the world, the good news of the kingdom can be proclaimed and heard. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our country and the churches in England. We pray for our country at a, cha- a time of change and disruption. We pray for our path out of the pandemic recognizing that everyone will have different ideas about how and what to do and how fast to do it. Let us respect and learn from each other. We pray for reduction in the injustices and inequalities in our own country, seeking roles for the church in all our communities. We pray in particular today for the Church of England as it seeks new ways to proclaim the gospel in a country that often seems not to be listening. We pray for positive and respectful debate at the General Synod meetings this week. We pray for the church's targets for reducing its carbon emissions and for other environmental initiatives. We pray that the church might play a prophetic role in relation to the environmental crisis. We pray for schools throughout the country that have been severely disrupted by coronavirus, and for children and teachers and parents and everyone else involved in education. And I'm afraid I can't pray for our country on a day like today without mentioning the football. So I pray for the match this evening and for everyone taking part and watching. And I pray that sport can help to bring us together as a country. I also pray for those of you who don't like football 
and are struggling to avoid it at the moment. Don't worry, it will soon be over. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our region and our diocese. We pray for everyone living in our region, especially those who are at the busiest time of year at the moment in the summer, such as farmers and those working in tourism and hospitality industries. We pray for a swift recovery from all the economic disruptions of the past 18 months. We pray for the holiday makers who come to our region, attracted by the beauty of our landscapes and seashores. Let them be genuinely restored and rested by their time away. We pray for those who can't take holidays at the moment as a result of ill health, financial difficulties, or other reasons. Help them to find other ways to relax. In my training at Serum College, I'm learning alongside many ordinands and candidates for licensed lay ministry from the Diocese of Bath and Wells. I'd like to pray for them particularly this morning and for everyone else involved in religious training and education. And remembering that we are all the church, I pray for strength and support as we seek to proclaim the gospel in our own ways in whatever situations we find ourselves in. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, let us pray for our local community, our church, and ourselves. We pray for the needs of our local communities and for everyone visiting and staying here over the summer. We extend our prayers to the other creatures living among us and pray for harmonious relationships with each other and with the natural world. We pray especially for the cafe and community hub as they, pray to, as they prepare to get started in person. We pray that these initiatives may be a powerful expression of God's mission here in Barrow and Breen. We pray that the church and community can work positively together to address challenges such as isolation and loneliness in our communities, which have often been exacerbated by the pandemic. We pray for ourselves and our families, committing whatever is on our hearts to you, knowing that you will hear us and respond to us. And wherever we are in our journeys of faith, we pray for a continued strengthening of our relationship with you, aware that we don't always get things right, but trusting in your eternal love. In your mercy. possibly the best way that I've ever heard football being included in prayers. I ought to make a note of that, should this ever happen again. (laughs) But for those of you that are disappointed, at least the Olympics start soon, so that's all good. (laughs) Great summer of sport. Anyway, the peace, which you may well need now. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So from where you are, please do feel free to share the peace with one another. Offertory hymn this morning is one that Jo um, mentioned particularly in relation to her sermon. Uh, it's Be Still My Soul. And may these words minister to you as we prepare to receive communion together. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
So we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn this morning picks up on the words that Joe shared earlier, that no matter what we face in life, those spiritual promises of God still always hold firm. Our final hymn is, What a Faithful God Have I. Find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder, I behold your face, singing what a faithful God.
faithful God. You are faithful. And so may God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and in the next. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.